Hi everyone. We'll do it in uh, yes, we'll do it in English. Um, I am uh, Eric Charret. I'm head of uh, Future Media at France Television, and this, these guys here are, are here to disrupt my business, and um, but also maybe to help it and to help it uh, thrive in the in the next future. Um, we all know, you all know that uh, this year is uh, the year where uh, main, uh, where streaming is becoming mainstream. And basically, um, streaming is winning. Streaming is winning, and no matter what, what device or operating system now. Either if you use Amazon for books, you use uh, Spotify for music, or you use a new platform, as we will see uh, with, uh, with our friend. You know that for the first time ever this year, Americans will consume more web and mobile media than TV. And this is a huge tipping point. This is coming very, very fast. Streaming is already the first way of consuming cultural goods in France. So this is moving very quickly, and uh, I guess we haven't seen everything yet. We'll, uh, we'll have a short presentation of five minutes each for everyone. We'll have someone on, um, on the webcam as well. And uh, we'll begin with you, Pierre. Uh, Pierre Fija is the co-founder of ClickOn. And uh, ClickOn is, um, well, say, we, it's a kind, ClickOn is a kind of a shazam for, uh, w for, for advertisement on TV and web. Yeah, we can say that. So I think that I'm going to have some slides to present a little bit um, what we're doing in our society and trying to give you uh, some information about what is going to be uh, the, the television in the few months uh, that are going to come. I don't know if uh, we can maybe uh, launch the PowerPoint. Okay, thank you. Um, so maybe for this presentation, I'm going to do it in French, French and uh, just uh, after uh, speak in English. Donc, je pense que je vais rien vous apprendre ici, mais le contexte général aujourd'hui, euh, il est simple, c'est que Internet a complètement bouleversé euh, la manière dont on se comporte, notamment par le biais de tous les nouveaux supports connectés euh, qui nous entourent, et ça a bien entendu changé la façon. Euh, dont on consomme la télévision. Pourquoi Parce qu'historiquement, quand on faisait la télévision et qu'on cherchait à diffuser de l'information, des émissions euh, ou de la publicité, on s'adressait à une personne, euh, voilà, il y avait un seul écran euh, au sein du foyer. Et aujourd'hui, finalement, quand on fait euh, la télévision, on s'adresse à quelqu'un qui est entouré euh, bah, d'un iPad, d'une tablette, d'un téléphone et euh, potentiellement d'un ordinateur portable. Alors, ce qu'on voit, c'est que du coup, effectivement, il y a une fragmentation des audiences. Aujourd'hui, la télévision, elle est de plus en plus allumée, mais finalement, on la regarde euh, de moins en moins. Il y a notamment un changement des modes de consommation. On fait du multitasking, on va consommer plusieurs devices à la fois. Et néanmoins, on voit qu'il bon, y a une dépendance historique à la télévision qui reste inchangée, puisque euh, en termes de taux d'équipement, euh, les foyers euh, sont tous équipés quasiment d'une télévision. Euh, et malgré les fortes augmentations d'équipements euh, connectés autour de la télé, euh, ça reste un média vraiment euh, nécessaire. Alors du coup, aujourd'hui, il y a beaucoup d'enjeux. On se dit que ces nouveaux supports connectés, ils peuvent venir, dans un certain sens, porter préjudice à la télévision, puisqu'elles peuvent détourner euh, l'attention euh, des téléspectateurs, finalement, et faire un peu de nombre à la télévision. Et nous, on pense vraiment le contraire. On pense que, donc effectivement, il y a un besoin d'optimisation média, mais que tous les nouveaux supports, aujourd'hui, euh, qui entourent l'usage de la télévision, finalement, doivent venir compléter la télévision, et ça demande quoi C'est-à-dire que quand un contenu est diffusé en télé et qu'on souhaite optimiser son aura, son impact, par le biais de tous les nouveaux usages et les, nou les nouveaux supports, on doit pouvoir piloter ce qui se passe en télé en temps réel. Alors, en temps réel, c'est-à-dire euh, avoir la capacité, notamment, euh, nous, c'est notre conviction, d'utiliser des technologies innovantes, donc des technologies de reconnaissance vidéo qui permettent d'identifier en temps réel tout ce qui se passe en télévision, donc vraiment, euh, en moins d'une seconde, savoir qu'une publicité est en train de diffuser un contenu. Et derrière, avoir la capacité de déployer des offres en télévision directement, donc de manière très innovante, puisqu'on parle de ce qui va arriver euh, dans les mois à venir, euh, ou des offres directement euh, web, mais qui sont basées sur un flux live. 
Donc je sais qu'une pub est diffusée, je vais pouvoir potentiellement sur ma télévision acheter le produit directement euh, en quelques clics ou euh, diffuser une offre complémentaire sur le web. Alors la question justement, notamment en parlant de publicité interactive, puisque c'était un peu la genèse de ClickOn, euh, on se rend compte qu'aujourd'hui c'est très difficile de mener des opérations de publicité interactive et nous on est vraiment convaincus euh, que la question c'est pas de savoir si la publicité interactive va arriver un jour sur la télévision, pour nous c'est une certitude, la question c'est plutôt de savoir comment on le fait euh, de la meilleure des manières, comment on fait pour créer facilement des opérations quand historiquement créer une publicité interactive c'était très difficile donc c'est pour ça que notre vision aujourd'hui, c'est que pour amener vraiment des éléments disruptifs dans le milieu de l'audiovisuel, il faut aussi avoir des outils de développement rapide qui nous permettent d'industrialiser facilement des offres automatisées sur un contenu live, potentiellement créer très facilement des applications de télé interactives. Donc actuellement, nous, c'est notamment ce qu'on propose chez Clicon, sans faire trop de publicité, c'est donc une technologie de reconnaissance vidéo en temps réel, et qui va nous ouvrir tous les usages dont je viens de vous parler, c'est-à-dire la synchronisation en deuxième, troisième écran, la télé interactive, le suivi média en temps réel ou du placement de produits. Donc notamment la synchronisation deuxième et troisième écran, euh, on est assez fiers puisqu'on a été les premiers finalement à lancer une offre euh, avec notre partenaire Sticky Ads euh, de synchronisation TV avec le web. Le principe est simple, une, offre passe, euh, une publicité passe en télévision et on va être capable en temps réel de diffuser la même publicité sur euh, un ensemble de supports euh, donc web, les tablettes, les téléphones, les smartphones, sur euh, des inventaires euh, très importants, et qui est aujourd'hui une offre qui est certes innovante, mais qui est vraiment une réalité, euh, puisqu'elle plaît aujourd'hui aux annonceurs, on a, on a déjà eu l'occasion notamment de, de travailler avec vraiment de, de belles marques. On va pouvoir effectivement faire de la télévision interactive sur un flux réel, c'est-à-dire un flux live, je, je vous parlais tout à l'heure euh, du cas par exemple d'un achat direct pendant une publicité, et faire du suivi média ou du placement de produits, tout ça en temps réel, l'ensemble des effets finalement qu'on va essayer de rajouter à la télévision, c'est vraiment de créer une intelligence cross-média. À l'époque, effectivement, on avait plutôt une télévision qui était basée sur des critères d'audience. On va essayer d'amener des nouveaux critères de performance en créant justement de l'interactivité, en cherchant à optimiser au maximum en temps réel les contenus qui sont diffusés, et notamment apporter un peu de, de ROI encore un peu plus à ce, à ce média qui était resté un peu plus passif dans le passé. Donc, vous pouvez retrouver quelques informations sur nous et je vous remercie de votre attention. Merci beaucoup Pierre. Uh, now I'm very happy to, uh, to, to welcome uh, Matthias, Matthias Hemstedt, uh, who is uh, the CEO of Magin. Magin, I think it's the first time uh, Magin is, uh, is presented in France, at least in a, at, on, a, on a public stage. Mag Magin, it's, um, it's a very, very interesting proposition. Um, in the US, they have, uh, they have Netflix, they have uh, Hulu, Hulu Plus, they have Amazon Premium. Um, In Europe, we, have, we don't have too much company like that, uh, but uh, there is from uh, Scandinavia a couple of uh, big companies of, of, uh, of, of very, very good startup like uh, Spotify and, and Magin. Magin is a Sweden company based in, uh, in Stockholm. It's an OTT cloud-based TV, um, and it's, uh, it's now uh, on an international pass because you will launch uh, very soon in Germany a huge market you will launch in Spain obviously we will ask you when will you launch in France but first please have a look to the to this uh, new proposition and how do you see the the market uh, moving right thank you um, I'm actually going to start off with some great quotes by Mr. Ballmer He said some things like, cloud-based software is the future. He said, service is the better value. He said, use of cloud, big data, and consumer interaction is where things are heading for business, and leveraging big data for customization. Some very, very good quotes. So what, ha what would happen if you would actually take all those quotes and use them for TV? That's basically what Madin has been doing the last three years. Let's look at television as a distribution form, and you see it's quite, quite dated. It's, it's a linear stream, two setup boxes, two a TV, a lot of cables, and that's it. So Spotify, a good Swedish company and friends of ours, to the music industry, they basically made everything available on all platforms, which revolutionized music big part of all music today is actually streamed by Spotify. And why is that? 
Well, it's, it's the same reason why television is working, because television is working because you have all the channels in one place, swap up and down on a remote control and it works, and you get something good enough to view. It's actually 90% of all viewing of video today still is television, not Netflix or on demand or YouTube. Television is extreme, extremely big because it has one of the most modern viewing behaviors. Find something easy to view in a world where you have too much information. In most of Europe, there's more than two hours of viewing on television per day and 10 to 15 minutes of video on demand. So we said, let's fix so television becomes as modern as the rest of the platform, but we don't need to fix the things that are already working. So what is not working? Well, as long as you don't want to sit in front of your television in your sofa, then it's not working. If you miss the beginning of a program, well, then it's not working. If you miss the program before, then it's not working. And all of these things can be a big annoyance for you as a consumer. And that's basically what we set up with Madian to, to try to, to solve. And I'm going to do something scary here, and I have no idea if it will work on stage in France, on a Swedish uh, iPad, on a French uh, 3G connection. Uh, but we'll see. <laughs> so this is basically Madian, and I'm going to try to hold this mic and doing this at the same time is probably a, a hard thing. But if you look at television, you will have this red line you can see here on the screen, which is the live broadcasted signal. That is the strength of television. Uh, but the second is over, it's over. So if I want to see CNN newsroom on a 3D connection in France, hopefully it will work. And I don't think it did. <laughs> uh, because it's easier to show you how Madden works if you, if you actually can demo these kind of things. But the idea is that you can view it on any device, at any place, at any time. It works on the pads, it works on the mobile phones, it works on the computers and it works on the smart TVs, which I think is something we will be talked about here later. And Madden is a true multi-device proposition. We have about 25% on each. Mobile phones, 25%. Pads, 25%. Computers, 25%, and smart TVs, 25%. So people really view content on all platforms. And Madian is, the easiest way to think of Madian is a cloud-based TV broadcasting platform. If you could put cable into the cloud, that's what Madian is. And uh, I think I'll leave it to that, and if there are some good questions instead. Thanks a lot, Matthias. Yes, uh, I guess there will be some question about Madian. Um, I think we have a, a, web, um, a webcam connection to Farad. Is it working? Can you guys hear me? Yes, we can hear you, can, but we can't see you yet. Yes, I see you. Hi, Great. Farad. Can Bonjour. You, Bonjour. Can you, can you present us uh, what, what's your, what your platform is doing and uh, how do you see the market moving in the next few, in the, let's say the next few months? Can you present your, your, the, the, how you view the market right now? You, right. you, 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 are, um, um, you are building, creating a, a, a cross-platform application suite and also uh, an advertising um, solution, right? Right. Um, so first of all, thank you for having me. I'm glad to join you guys. I wish I was there in Paris. I'm joining you guys from San Francisco, California. It's 2 a.m. here. I hope you guys like my pajamas. Um, but um, let's talk about AdRise. So and let me give you a quick overview of the market before I talk about what we do specifically. If you think about a 30-year-old today in San Francisco or in the United States in general, um, on a Friday evening they would be tuning to Netflix or Amazon or Hulu to watch movies and TV shows, unlike what they would do a decade ago, which would be tuning into broadcast television. And there is a major shift um, in in TV viewership that will happen over the next five years 
today half of Netflix viewership is through TV applications on various connected devices, anywhere from Xbox to other game consoles to streaming boxes such as Roku um, or Apple TV to smart TVs um, such as Samsung and LG um, to um, tablets. And um, over the next five, six years, you will see this shift um, away from traditional set-top boxes, which today dominates TV viewership, at least in the United States, um, to half of TV viewership will be off set-top boxes. And if you think about it, I just heard a stat that in Europe, there's, there's two hours on average per household of TV viewership. In the United States, that number is depending on the stat you look at, is four to five hours a day. Um, um, why that happens, I don't know, but uh, it's a major um, media delivery and advertising uh, for, um, uh, for the American Farad, we lost you. Are you still there? Can you hear us? Can you hear me? Yes, you're back. Okay, good. Can you, can you tell us how does AdRise help uh, content sure. providers? Or so content, content owners? Do, right. We partner with premium content owners such as stars or major production or distribution companies in the United States and help them by building them their own branded video on demand app across all these major connected TV platforms. Uh, today, AdRise has built more apps on TV than any company in the world. And as a result, we've become also the largest advertising platform on connected TVs. Uh, as an example, we have built about 30% of all the new on-demand apps on Samsung Smart TV platforms. And so we manage everything from content delivery to advertising technology and after TV promotion. Thanks. Uh, uh, do you want to add something? Because the connection is, is not too good and we thank you very much to, to wake up so well or to stay, <laughs> to stay up so late or so early. Do you want to add something? Because uh, we'll, uh, I will now give the floor to uh, the next speaker. Do you, uh, do you want to add something, Farad? I think that's a good intro. I'm happy to jump in. Hopefully right. I, you guys can hear me better moving forward. Sure. Thanks a lot. Now we'll, um, we'll see um, and we'll hear from uh, Jean-Pierre Fumagali. Um, his name will not give you any sense from where he is. He's from Germany and he will speak, he will speak in English. And um, he's, um, he's working for uh, SmartClip. SmartClip is a, is a huge multi-screen advertising platform. Uh, it's also a video advertising uh, um, provider and um, it's also very very much multi-screen um, um, in, a, in a huge development uh, right now it's European and um, and the floor is yours Jean-Pierre can you tell us same question how how do you see the market moving how do you see the the trend going and uh, what kind of value proposition you you can make yeah, thank you so much um, for being here. Um, no presentation, and I'm going to tell you not everything is on demand because I'm used to presentation on demand. Sometimes you have to schedule it a little bit uh, beforehand. I came too late, so I have no presentation. So just give you a little idea um, what Magin also said. Um, not everything will move on demand. There will always be the television, um, linear television as well, that will survive, but it will dec decrease. That is clear. Um, so at SmartClip, we're working in 11 countries, 170 people, um, monetizing for content owners and publishers their content on all the devices, and we're currently delivering on 23 different platforms. Um, that gives you an idea, when we really talk about multi-screen, most people only think about the laptop, the PC, um, the, the mobile phone, uh, and that's it, um, maybe the tablet. Um, but there are actually 23 different platforms where you can watch and interact with content that is being streamed through the internet. 
Um, what most people underestimate, and this is a new trend that we see currently happening, is that the TVs are getting connected to the internet as well. In all European countries we have by now, one third of all households are being connected to the internet with their television set. And that gives a lot of change in the market because there are actually four dimensions to it. The one dimension is you access, your you access content through apps in a completely new app world, similar to what we've seen happening on the mobile phones in the last five years, app stores coming up with video content on the television, as the, yes, but there's also much more than just video. There's gaming, there's Facebook, there's Google, there's, there's uh, Skype, there's virtual fitness, anything you can think of, the television's gonna change in the app world. Then there's the second area, which is the portal world, which belongs to um, the Philips, the LGs, the Samsungs, and we work with all of them, and they get a media owner in this space as well. So they own real estate, they own the first page, if you look at, for example, Samsung in Germany, I don't know if it's live here yet in France, if you turn on the television, the first page you see is actually a Samsung entry page that gives you a recommendation what you should watch. It's not the linear television anymore, directly that you get access to. So this world is changing as well. And the third area is how do you get the content on that television? And this world is completely mixing, and this will be mixed probably for the next 10 to 15 years because we see services like Magin coming up that stream linear television into those um, smart TVs where you can either watch linear television, lean back, or you can move forward video on demand. You see apps are coming up, Hulu, Netflix. These are kind of television apps as well that are streaming over the internet, but at the same time, you see the broadcast world is still there, and this is what most people don't, um, don't get. Even broadcast is changing, because what we are currently doing, and this is in the US happening everywhere, and look at Sky in UK, even though the broadcast world through a connected TV, what people are starting to do and television stations are starting to do is exchange the ad block through a one-to-one -one delivered video advertising block. So even if you have a one-to-many um, signal that is still broadcasters, there's no reason why your television spot shouldn't be one-to-one -one delivered to the, um, the advertising through the internet. And this is happening right now. I mean, it's very easy if you have a stream that's all IP-based, what Magic is doing, then the whole stream is IP-based, and of course the advertising is IP-based. You can do anything with it, you can exchange it, you can do ad server delivered in that, that standard. But even if you think that broadcast is gonna stay, and it's probably gonna stay out there for a couple of years, this world is changing completely. That means we have different statistics. If you think about how television is measured today, this will completely shift. Every television that's connected is a set-up box that gives you impressions, viewerships, viewer behaviorships. LG has that data, Samsung has that data, Google has that data, every set-up manufacturer has the data, even every television station. Each television station to HBTV has that data, exact viewing data, on one-third of all households currently in Europe. Now, if you think about your television measurement, that's normally a panel of a couple of thousand people representing your viewership, how you sell television, that's gonna change. You have real data. And with the real data comes also targeting. Because if you sign up with LG and Samsung, which you do today, you sign up with the terms and conditions, you sign up with Netflix, you give your profile, they have your age, gender. Google the same. So you can mix real television data with real data from the viewership, and on top, you can do ad server delivered ad blocks into even linear television combining this data with real viewership. So this is gonna change the whole ecosystem. It's gonna change ad server delivery, and ultimately, what it means is that the whole video market, and when most people talk about video market, they only mean online video market. If I talk about video market, I mean the whole television market plus the online market, because television is the video market as well. It's just starting to go digital now, and in the future, and this is what the advertisers are interested in, it's gonna be a huge, 230 billion global television market that goes digital, plus the digital world is going video as well, so we'll have probably a $250 billion um, global market that is digital video, independently if you watch on demand, if you watch linear, through broadcast, over the IP, it's all gonna be delivered through one platform ad serving, and that's the big change. Thanks a lot, Jean-Pierre. What I take from you all is that TV is not dead yet, which is the good news for me, at least. Um, but I have a question. How do you, what do you do with data? 
How do you share your data? Who is, uh, who is benefiting of, of, of the data you will have? Can, can I ask you this uh, to, uh, to all of you? Okay, so I think that at the moment you have a lot of data um, on the web devices, you, on your computer, on your uh, mobile phone, maybe. But at the moment, it's kind of difficult to have a lot of data uh, when you speak about TV, even connected TV. And even if uh, I trust too in HBB TV, um, you will have, uh, I think in a few months, more and more data that are going to uh, help you uh, find a good application for, for the good person, even in, in real time when you want to create interacti uh, interactivity on the TV. For, for sure, the data that are going to help the interactive uh, uh, the advertising, I think, and because it's, 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 uh, it's uh, what I'm doing. But uh, I think that, yeah, in, in the few, few years, uh, when the people are more going to use a connected TV, we are going to get more and more data than they use it for the to increase the, the TV experience? Um, I mean, data is going to be key in the future. Um, I, I have a quote from somebody from Nielsen who I just recently met who told me, the years of panel measurement is over. Why should I have a panel if I can, me can measure the whole world? I mean, we, ha we are living in a world where all the data is available somehow. So it's actually so much data that you cannot handle it anymore from advertising. And this is ultimately another shift in market that we see all the data will be somehow available. And the question is, it's so much data, how do you make use of that as advertising? And ultimately, this can only be done not manual anymore. So you'll also see a shift currently in the agencies from the media planner away to tools. It's all about programmatic platforms. Um, this is also why we have launched the SmartX platform, because we ultimately think if television is going to go digital, and it's only one screen out of multi-screens, and you have hundreds of touch points, 23 different platforms, all these data points. You all want to make use of that and make for the advertiser a return of investment, a, a good campaign. You cannot do this manually anymore. It needs to be a system that is compiling all this data and also from the booking side, it needs to be a system that makes use of that. And if you look at what Procter & Gamble is doing with their Hawkeye system, they're building up their own DSP system that gets all, all their data, all their knowledge about their clients to actually be, be able to connect to the other side of that game. So that's, I think, the future. Well, data is very interesting of, of several points. Uh, and to understand the proposition fully of data. So for instance, if you have a full cloud-based system, which Madin does, clients and, and screens, they're just devices and screens, nothing else, which means that you actually in data have it all in the cloud. So when you think about clients, everybody thinks, what's the data and the client? That's not really relevant from a cloud perspective, which means that all things get synchronized, and I like to take the consumer proposition. Madian is about consumer. We created Madian to be TV designed by the viewer, and cloud happened to be the perfect solution for that. And what happens with data? Well, there's a scary proposition of data. Who owns it, who controls it, and how about privacy issue? Uh, do you really want uh, personalized advertisement that goes through different systems? You surf into Nike on your mobile, and then you turn on your television, and you get that shoe you almost bought in an advertisement with a, with, with, uh, with a rebate to buy it. That's the proposition which can happen. Uh, but I, if, if you look at it from consumption behavior, the interesting thing with big data is looking at behavior, comparing it to other behavior, and making a better proposition for you. Imagine a world we could just turn on television and it would show you a full line of television the whole night, which is exactly what you wanted. That's what big data can do for you, for instance. Thank you, Farad. Can you jump in and, and tell us what your view on, uh, on what to do with data and how to share them? Particularly on TV and connected devices, three sets of users. I think the panel members um, mention advertising and obviously reducing waste when it comes to TV advertising is going to be uh, the focus of a lot of advertisers since on broadcast television they don't get to pick and choose audiences that they want to reach. So that's one clear benefit to advertisers. But also there are two other sets of users that will benefit from data. Uh, one is content owners and content producers 
So think of what happened. I don't know if you guys have heard the stories about how Netflix um, essentially purchased or um, produced content specifically around House of Cards. Is they use data to understand what people want to watch, uh, what which actors and actresses should be involved in that particular show, and as a result, House of Cards was a huge success for Netflix. I think a lot of content owners are looking at what they have done there and trying to um, replicate it because it will be critical for them moving forward in the future to use data to understand what type of shows they need to produce. And the third set of users are going to be the audiences. Uh, they will have ability to see recommendation of similar shows that they have watched in the past, see what their friends like to watch, and, and express themselves. Um, on, on social networks uh, via these TV shows and content. So, um, and, you know, targeted advertising means uh, better economics for content owners, which ultimately will benefit uh, users as well. So I think overall it's going to be all positive for all fronts. There's obviously questions around privacy that everybody needs to address. Uh, but I think we've um, to some extent, address them on the web. I don't see why that would be an issue on connected devices. Thank you, Farad. My, I, I have a, a question again for all of, of you, and then we'll, we'll take questions from the floor. Um, connected TV is not yet huge in France. Uh, it's coming, it's growing. Um, the, we, we have different figures about it in, in France, but when do you think it will become mainstream uh, in Europe, uh, of course you are coming from different country, mainstream meaning uh, uh, the, the tipping point of 50% of people using connected TV. I mean, um, we're doing this since three years now. We're integrated in all the OEMs, LG, Samsung, Philips, so we know exactly the stats and data. I can tell you that we see growth rates on our ad server quarter to quarter 25% also in France. If you look at the stats and the forecast, and currently all numbers are running above the forecast in Europe, um, the forecasts all tell you that almost for all countries, including France, by 2016, you will hit the 50% mark plus. Some countries, even like Germany, up to 66% by 2016. So if you talk to advertisers, it's all, currently we're currently between 20 to 30%. If you look at all connected devices, Apple set-top boxes, smart TVs. Smart TVs are obviously only in some countries only up to 10%, but they're growing very quickly because if you go into a store right now, you cannot buy a non-connected TV anymore. It's almost impossible. So numbers are going up dramatically. And as I said, for advertisers, if you reach the 30% mark, it's going to be interesting for them. Then they start to look at these uh, new opportunities. If it's going to be beyond the 50%, it's going to become mainstream. So we think it's going to be in 2016 according um, to all the um, stats of the market. Matthias, your take? Well, I basically agree because the you world... Said you, you said your figure on connected TV are growing very, very yeah, quickly. Yeah, it's, it's growing by huge amount of numbers uh, in, in our, our service. Already, uh, we announced and started doing things with, with smart TVs fully just six months ago. And now they're already 25% of all the viewing share in our platform. And what TVs have been missing before is that the platforms weren't really up to par and you try to do everything on your big screen that wasn't supposed to be there. You don't really use the big screen for interaction, but you use it to push things to it, to view things together. And there's coming more and more things to that ecosystem that helps you with that. And as you said, almost 100% of all televisions sold today are smart TVs. And for, for instance, for Madian, we have pan-European agreements with all of these. Uh, so if you buy a television uh, today or the last year, and we are in that market, you will be able to have television with just a smart TV and internet. You don't need any other infrastructure in the world anymore. And when that happens, and TVs first, directly in smart TVs, then it's going to explode. Pierre? Okay, so I think uh, that you have to make a difference be to have to define exactly what is a connected TV. In fact, in the past, you, you had an internet connection on your TV, maybe in France, thanks to the set-top boxes, and then you have the smart TV or where the TV itself is connected to internet. 
And then you have to understand what uh, exactly is interesting when you use a connected TV. Uh, we are sure, and that's what I, uh, that's what I was saying, um, uh, you have to have services in live uh, if you want really to use uh, all the capacity of a connected TV. So as for myself, I think that in France and in Europe, the connected TV uh, will arrive with HBB TV a norm that allow um, every uh, TV to get the same uh, services uh, on the same technical specification. Uh, that what will bring really um, new services and, and uh, I think start the, the real use of connected TV. So um, and the set top boxes themselves, I think, are going to to become um, com compatible with the uh, HBB TV. So I think in maybe two years, uh, it's really going to to grow up, and uh, we will find on all our TV um, services, on our TV ads and uh, TV movies. I think. Quickly, uh, Farad, how is it in the US uh, on the on the connected TV side? Right. Actually, I may have to disagree, I'm afraid, with some of the uh, comments made earlier. I'm coming from the perspective of a company that's deployed and... We, and can't, we, we can't hear you, Farad. Can you... Can you, hmm, can you hear me now? No. Hmm. Connection is, uh, is, is, is lost. Not no. Okay, it's, it's, right it's now. Can you hear us? Um, I can hear you well. That's I don't fine. Know if you Go ahead, hear. quickly. Okay. Um, so I may have to disagree with some of the points made. Um, the way we define connected TV is four categories, one of which is smart TVs, which we don't see much usage, at least in the United States. Um, we see game consoles and streaming boxes such as Roku and Apple TV to be far more successful than traditional smart TV players such as Philips and Sharp and other ones in the space. Um, so although connected TV viewership as a whole will grow, certainly, uh, I don't know the numbers in Europe, but uh, we haven't seen much growth within smart TV. They sell a lot of devices, but viewership on those devices uh, are not comparable with a device such as Xbox. Thanks a lot, Farad. Thank you very much. Que vous I faites... hope you heard me. <laughs> Thank you. Um, est-ce que vous avez des questions dans, dans, dans la salle pour notre panel? Ou est-ce qu'on a le temps de prendre une ou deux questions, peut-être? Ou, ou remarques? Avant que notre ami Pierre Chapaz vienne prolonger cette, euh, cette réflexion et cette... Euh, Quelqu'un veut intervenir Non On appelle Pierre Chapaz alors Allez, Pierre. Merci à tous. Merci. Merci. À Merci. 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 Thanks a lot. Merci beaucoup.